Hello everybody, welcome to Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James and I've got two of my correspondents with me to look forward to a big game on Super Sunday this week. I'm joined by Simon Bibby at FPL underscore footballer. How are you, Si? Si can't hear us. Oh, <laughs> doing very well, mate. <laughs> you missed your cue there, Si. And I'm joined by at Spirit underscore Blues at Sean Norton, our Everton correspondent. How are you, Sean? I'm here, uh, yeah, top of the league. I mean, top of the world. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I, I know you've been buzzing for this one particularly, Sean, particularly after your correspondent week appearance before in pre-season, which everybody just ignored straight after game week one. <laughs> what's, if I come to you first, what's changed? Or is it just obvious new signings? Yeah, the new, the new signings that we, you know, we, we sort of touched on, didn't we? We, we kind of knew who was likely to come in. It was just a case of whether we could get the deals done in time for the start of the season. Um, but the fact that they, they all hit the ground running, um, you know, first and foremost, that they all played. Because I, you know, I spoke to you. I didn't, I didn't think Rodriguez would, would start the first game of the season against Tottenham. Um, no, you know, no chance I thought we'd ease him in to things, given his, his injury record and the fact he hadn't played any pre-season games. But no, all three were thrown in and all three played really, really well against Tottenham. Uh, and we've just gone on from there. It was very much open the three of them would t- wouldn't turn up at Tottenham in game week one in hindsight, mate. I think it would have been a very, very different game. Mind you, I wish Tottenham had just started the season in game week two and we could ignore game week one. Uh, another team that's come down to Tottenham already this season, Sai, is your own. That was a very different game to when Everton come down. What's the impact of your new signings so far for Newcastle? Well, it started very well. I think it seems like quite a while ago, but that away win at West Ham kind of set up how I thought we were going to set up. All three signers played, and Hendrick as well, who scored that day, got one of his two goals for the season. And this um, is And it was looking rosy. Yeah, yeah, it was looking, it was looking good. And then we've kind of regressed back to the, the norm since then. And, uh, you know, Bruce tried out Andy Carroll up top for a couple of games. Does what he usually does, which is if the team's playing all right, he'll keep players in there, which I think will be interesting this weekend to see if uh, Jacob Murphy continues in the team or not. Um, I I think really the the team is kind of regressed to what it was last year. You know, you look at all the statistics and we're kind of bottom for most of the kind of modern ways that you would analyse football in terms of pressing and and things like that. And shots conceded is really alarming. Um, I could go on for ages about that, but maybe I'll, uh, I'll wait till you ask me about what I think the score will be this weekend. What do you think the score will be this weekend? Let's get well, straight into it. Okay. <laughs> Until, until I saw the, like, all the red cards that Everton have accumulated in the last couple of games, you know, it could have been a cricket score, but uh, uh, I, I can't see us getting anything from the game, to be honest. Like, I've been so impressed with Everton and the way that they've addressed the issues that they had going into this season. You know, it's a kind of clear model for us as a club that, you know, I'm not saying we've got that amount of money to spend, but they, they had an, an issue with the centre of their midfield and they went out and bought three quality upgrades for that area of their team. So uh, I think if the, if he plays St Maximum in the right place, and I think, to be honest, he'll probably play down the right. Well, I'm hoping he will, seeing as Richarlison's out and Digne's out for the weekend. The, um, we might be able to do something, but I can't see us getting a result. Surely we all want St Maximum through the middle, don't we? Well, yeah, I've, I know I've chatted to you about this before and I think he got that opportunity last weekend and through whether it was just one of his off games or there was a lack of coaching into what he needed to do in that role, he just kind of looked like a bit lost. I know like the saying is... He wasn't getting the ball and it just seemed to be a lack of understanding of how to kind of play in that position within this weird system that Bruce threw up uh, to try and get a result at Wolves, which kind of worked in the end. Yeah, I mean, it was a strange one, wasn't it? With basically Almiron and Fraser playing part of a a three-man midfield, basically. Do do you foresee that continuing? Well, when the lineup came out, I looked at it and there was six wingers that you would class as kind of 
typical traditional wingers in the lineup. So it was quite a fun little game trying to figure out how this team was actually going to line up. But through like injuries or, or whatever, he, he, he managed to get a decent shift out of the players. And I think that's that's what you'll always get from this Newcastle team is, you know, they will consistently churn out just about enough to get us through the season. And, you know, I think if you're not going to play players in the uh, best positions, you're limiting your capabilities by sticking Fraser on the right of midfield. Like when, when has he ever played there? Even Callum Wilson playing, he, at the moment he's playing that kind of lone striker role. And I think it's no coincidence that no striker in the last five, six years has been able to deliver in that role when he's playing like so isolated and just running into channels and there's no one pressing behind him. So I don't know. I think, I think the rumblings about Bruce that have been going on since he got the job really, are, you know, I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. If you look at kind of how the type of performances and the way he's setting the team up. On Newcastle, Sean, where would St. Maximin play that you, if you saw the team and you thought, oh, I, I wish he wouldn't play there against me? Where do you think he could hurt you most? On the left. So are you, are you, is the assumption that Kenny's going to come back in for the Newcastle game? I think he will. Um, but that's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a 50-50. It could easily be Godfrey again, but... Um, Bearing in mind that he is a centre back playing out of position at right back, Kenny definitely wasn't ready for the Southampton game, um, so I'm expecting he'll come in and play. Um, but John Joe Kenny has got some positional issues that have caught us out many times in the past. So I think if Saint Maximum was playing on the left and was up against John Joe, he'd, he'd, he'd definitely I'd, I'd be worried. I, I, with St. Maximin, though, I, I don't know if it's positional that would cause you issue. Is it? It's obviously his dribbling ability. He's yeah. not one who, I don't know, it's going to come from the right, he's going to run in behind. He doesn't make that sort of run that's penetrating. It's what he does on the ball, isn't it, Si? That's, he's so damaging. And it's interesting, obviously, Sean's saying there, wouldn't want him to play on the left would be a threat. From an FPL perspective, many of us, and we've all been the same, I think many of us, get him centrally where he can run at the heart of people feels like he'll do more damage. Would you agree with that? I mean, one, one, of, one of the things that Michael Keane and Yeri Mean are, are very good at is not getting dribbled past. So, you know, for me, the damage from him would come out wide, more so down through the middle. I think we're more set up to be able to cope with that if he was to play there, especially with the likes of Allen and potentially Delph. To, I'd like to see Delph come in. I think, you know, Gilfie Sigurdsson and, and Andre Gomez just don't give us enough in that midfield three. And if we were to play Fabian Delph, Andre go in, sorry, Ducore alongside Allen and let Ducore get forward, I think those two would be able to sort of cope with St. Maximum playing central. Just wonder if you'd want to go up against Newcastle and play a more defensive minded midfielder than what you have been playing with. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the problem we have when we don't when we don't have Richarlison. It, it, it he's almost like two players for us. It's like similar to when we spoke about Patricia Garner Gay, and when we lost him, what a hammer blow it was because he, he does the work of almost two players, and it was noticeable against Southampton, and it has been previously when we don't have him because we're a size, size talking about Newcastle end up in a situation where the striker is isolated. That's what very much happened against Southampton. And it's because Richarlison's missing primarily that that happens because Awobi just can't get up and down like Richarlison does. And we haven't got anybody who can get up and down like Richarlison does. So the drop-off in standard from the likes of him and even to a lesser extent, Seamus Coleman, you know, the drop-off's huge. And that's why the performance against Southampton was so, so very different to the performance, say, against Tottenham. Interesting. So, how do you want Newcastle to line up, generally speaking, in the formation? Do you want a back five, a back four? I mean, if I was picking the team, it would be a back four. It would be four, four, one, four, one, or four, two, three, one. I think would be the optimum. You've got to get Fraser, Almer, and, and Sir Maxim in the team. 
So it's just how you utilize those three. I probably wouldn't play Fraser and Almer in midfield. Although, to be fair, Almer and I thought he played well and he covered a lot of ground. He's just, he gets quite panicked when he's on the ball. And I think with that Everton midfield three or whoever you're going to play in there with Takuri and Allen and whoever joins him, Gomez, you know, I think he's going to struggle a bit more. Whereas Wolves were, Wolves play a bit like us in terms of they don't press very high. They give you time on the ball. And even in that scenario, he was still, you know, picking out the wrong passes. So I'd go four at the back. Um, in midfield, it's a case of whether Hayden's fit to play alongside Hendrick. I think you'd stick those two. And then you'd have Fraser, St. Maximin and Almiron just all running wherever they can to try and sort of penetrate that Evan defence that has looked a little bit shaky, I'd say, particularly after the last game. Digne's a massive miss for them, obviously. Um, the problem is, in the way that Bruce manages the team, is if he gets a positive result, he'll generally either stick to the same formation or stick to the same players. So after Jacob Murphy played so well at a stand-in right wing back, I don't know how he drops him. I don't think he'll drop him. He's not good enough to play behind the striker or on the right wing. And I've actually been calling for him for a while to be converted into a wing back. So I think that kind of suits his tendencies. He's quite disciplined. He's obviously got enough pace, I think, to play that position while having that extra cover of having three centre-backs. It also suits Shah as well. So I think we'll probably end up playing, or Bruce will pick a five at the back. And fairly similar lineup to what we played uh, against Wolves, I think. Uh, Sean, have you played against anyone who's played about five this season? It's probably just Brighton, isn't it? Or am I missing anyone no. there? But Brighton, obviously, dead wing backs play very differently to how Newcastle's will. Do you have any, with obviously Richarlison missing, do you have any fear from a creative aspect if it is a, a back five for Newcastle? Well, if they play, I mean, if they play a back five and, and they're sort of sitting deep, um, then, then they're obviously vulnerable to the quality of James Rodriguez putting balls in the box. Because um, it'll probably only be a matter of time till he finds the head of Calvert Lewin. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure that that's the right approach to take. I think Southampton got their tactics spot on against us, sadly, again. <laughs> um, because our pressing against Southampton was just really, really poor. And it allowed Southampton, similar to how Liverpool did in the derby, to just to just knock it around us and just play through us. And I think I think that's where we're most vulnerable if we get the pressing wrong, which is why I sort of be happy to see Delph come in. I think between the three players that I mentioned, Delph, Allen and Ducure, I think they can cover the ground better because Gilfie's so slow. You you know yourself, you know, you know, you spoke about it before. When a team presses, they've all got to do it. Because if you've got one week link, it just falls down. And so with Awobi and Sigurdsson, it was all too easy for Southampton to just play through us. That's interesting, that. I mean, what's the impact of, of Allen? I think to the eye, we go, yep, sitting midfielder, good distribution. He was obviously outstanding against us in, in the first game, in game week one. Why, why was that protection not there in the same way on Sunday against Saints then, do you think? Well, to a lot of us, he, he, did, he didn't look quite fit. He, he, he didn't seem to be getting them on the pitch as much as he has been. So I don't know whether, whether you know, because he, he got a knock before the international break. So he obviously, he hasn't missed any games for us. But his performances since he got that knock, um, which was in the League Cup, if I remember rightly, against West Ham, where he ended up going off. He's just not quite looked right since he come back in. Just, so I think he might be feeling the effects of that injury somewhat. Um, but also, you know, we've got to remember it's a, new, it's a new league for him, it's a new team, new system. You know, maybe he was just playing, you know, he hit the ground running and, and he's levelling off a little bit maybe. Um, I don't, I'm not totally convinced that he will stay as a sort of holding midfielder for us moving forward. I think that'll be Gabamon anyway. I think he, he seems to naturally want to get further up the pitch. So I think when Gabamon's fit, it'll be Gabamon, Allen and Ducure will be the three that will play in the middle. Are you, um, I know obviously you're doing great at the moment, Sean. Are you concerned defensively? It's, it's unusual at this stage to have the team that's top of the league conceded nine goals in six games. And you're not alone, obviously. But are you concerned about it ongoing? Yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, I've done a thread 
about Evan Assets before the season started and I spoke about Lucas Dean. That that was the thing that put me off recommending him because I well, I always say to you, he's always capable of getting a return in terms of an assist because his dead ball delivery is so good and his crossing and open play is, is, is top class. And with Calvert-Lewin up front, you know that those chances can get finished. But clean sheet-wise, I don't, I don't like Mina and Keane as a pair. I don't, I don't think they go well together because they're both sort of stoppers and blockers type centre-backs. Um, so I'm not having Holgate because when Holgate's fit, I'm sure you'll see Holgate or Godfrey alongside Mina or Keane. So, plus you've got a felon in goal who's never too far away from a calamity. And I, I, I know I know that we are the worst performing team in terms of errors, big errors. And that, and that doesn't surprise me and it doesn't surprise Evertonians to talk to it about. I think, we've, <laughs> I, I think we've made six big errors and Liverpool were 17th in the table, but they'd only made three. So for us to have made twice the errors of the team that's in 17th, it's quite, quite talent, I think. What do you think of Pickford, Si? <laughs> oh, he's, he's got a special place in every Newcastle fan's heart. <laughs> well, that's part why I mentioned it, because it was a game two he years just... ago where I, I think you came back from 2-0 down and won 3-2, and uh, Pickford lost his mind a bit, didn't he? He, oh yeah, he was like clapping the fans and stuff. He, he just, he loves to give it the big in. I think, I think he's, you saw it with like the tackle with Van Dyke as well. I, I think he kind of knows his, he, he's like the most arrogant keeper. But you kind of need that as a keeper. Right? Everyone says you've got to have a bit of self-belief and arrogance. But at the same time, he knows his own liabilities. So it's like this weird clash of someone that knows they're not good enough, but also thinks that they're better than they are. So he, for me, the, the, fun, the fundamentals of his game you know, reaction-wise, he, he can, like, sh- stop shots. But he's, he's not the sort of keeper, I think. He, he's just not as good as he thinks he is. And being, like, an, an ex Mackham as well, it's just it's quite funny. And also, he's in my dad's fantasy football team, which gives me a lot of joy whenever I sit down and I see some kind of... calamity from him. Um, yeah, the uh, few banter it. You've got to think that Ancelotti's not going to stick with him another season. But then we said that about other keepers and other, other teams as well. So it seems to be a bit of a problem area for quite a few teams. Is there anything, Sean, behind the scenes suggesting that Olsen might put a threat on Pickford at all? No, I don't. I, I, can't, I can't see it. I think if it was going to happen, it would have happened against Southampton because the amount of um, stick that he took post-Derby that was the perfect game to take him off the firing line. Flip is, though, that mentally it might have been better for him to play another game of football. Well, can't, immediately. can't yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that, that's, that's it, isn't it? But I, I do think, you know, when you, when you look at that match, we very easily could have been, you know, 2-0 down and had 10 men because of the mistake that Pickford made so early on. And that's off the back of several other mistakes that he's made so far this season, but they've not cost us. I mean, he was flawless against Tottenham. He, he played really well. And I, I was hoping that this was Jordan coming back more focused, yeah, like, like he is for England, because he doesn't, he, doesn't make, he doesn't make mistakes for England. I mean, people tend to try to jump on every little thing he does for England, but he doesn't make what I class as a mistake that I do, that he makes for Everton. Um, and I think it's because he's focused more and he concentrates more and he knows he's got that competition. So he, he, he knows if he has a bad game, he'll, he'll potentially be out of the team. Whereas at Everton, he hasn't got that. Um, and I just don't see the lad Olsen. I, I just don't see him coming in unless, unless Pickford has back-to-back matches where he makes you know horrendous mistakes that mean we drop points. I just think, I just think Olsen's there as a battle. All right. What do you think, Sean, the, the solution is for the left-hand side against Newcastle? Luca Dean's suspension, obviously, um, rescinded to a one-game ban. Yeah. What, what's, what's the solution there with, obviously, Richarlison missing as well still? So, I think the Nakunku will come in for Dean, um, and he's been, he's been outstanding in the games he's played in the League Cup. 
Um, he's really, really good young lad. We got for next to nothing from from Marseille, I think it was. Um, and, and and the boy is a, is a powerhouse. He can get up and down, up and down all day long. Um, so I've got I've got no worries. You know, what one game I think I think it's great to see him to see what he can do against you know a Premier League side because obviously he played against West Ham in the League Cup, but West Ham sort of made made several changes. So it was a decent test against Yarmolenko. But I think someone like, you know, Fraser or St. Maximum, if they play out wide, they'll be, you know, the sort of test that we want to see him have to see just how good he is. Um, but ahead of him, I'm hoping that Anthony Gordon plays. So if, if the team comes out and Awobi's there or Bernard's there, then Sai should be more pleased with that than should he say Anthony Gordon because I think Anthony Gordon's more suited to playing and being able to cover for the Charles and better than anyone else that we've got. That doesn't say a lot for Bernard and Awobi, mate. No, no, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on Callum Wilson so far? Uh, good signing. I think he's he's proven that he's he's an asset in every game. I think the similar to what I was saying about St. Maximin earlier, I think one issue that Bruce has got and you can tell it's evident, I don't think he's like a real kind of training ground like coach, is he just defaults to his tendencies very quickly, which is run down the channels and in the system that we play that's so deep where Whenever we actually manage to get the ball to him, he's got. There's no one around him because we're so. Unless the player's running with the ball like St. Maximin or Almeron, we're so slow at progressing the football. He's just not, I think, being utilised in the way that he should be. You look at. I know I talked about Fraser earlier playing on the left, and now he's suddenly in his first starts popping up in the right of midfield. But King, to me, when he was at Bournemouth, always played in like a tandem with someone else. Usually that was, I said King, well, I meant Wilson, but he played with someone like King. Yeah. So the question is, if that's going to be either Almeron or St. Maximin, which I think it should be, is trying to get them to play as a pairing. He's always going to nick you goals. I think he even got an assist, an FPL assist at the weekend for the free kick. And that's the kind of thing that he does. He always contributes. Um, I've, I've been happy with him. I just think we need to play to his strengths a bit more and also try and iron out some of those tendencies that aren't really going to benefit how the team's set up to play. When he played with Carroll at West Ham, I thought that the two of them did quite well together. I thought Wilson knew what Carroll was going to do and played off it. But it always feels, when I see something positive for you offensively, it always feels to the detriment of something else. So for me, as an FPL manager going into game week one, I was like, this is bad for St. Maximum. But then the positions yeah. that say St. Maximum was allowed to pick up against Burnley was very much to his benefit. But actually, I'm not sure if it was necessarily to the benefit, in spite of the fact Wilson scored twice, I'm not sure it was the benefit to the rest of the players in the team. I've, and it's a, think, it's a constant fight for the balance, isn't it? Yeah, I think you nailed it there. Our, our entire approach every game is it seems to be addition by subtraction. So we're not able to... And I don't, I don't know if it's the, the players... It's definitely something to do with the style of football. I don't think suits what our best 11 is. Um, but you're right. Every, every time we try and kind of figure out some component of our play that's going to make us a bit better going forward, it makes us more vulnerable defensively. Um, but the way, I, the way I see it, like we, we conceded the most shots in the league by some distance, trying to play a, a defensive style. And... It's just, it's not worked. I, we're set up as a defensive team, but we're, we're generally quite shit at defending. If that's going to, if that's going to be what we're going to try and achieve is to stop teams scoring. It's like, you can't gamble 38 times a season that you're going to let up 12 shots a game and come away with a point. If you're only hitting one shot, on target at the end. It's just like madness. It's it's more like uh, 16, 17 shots a game at the moment. I have no idea what that guy's going to do from like week to week. So is that just a long-standing issue then, Si, where yeah, yeah, Bruce... True, true, yeah, is, this, is this why we keep coming back to that? And I, I, my sense is that you would rather he moved on.
I would, but at the moment, I think given the, the current structure of the club and everything that's going on with Ashley, and you know, I'm quite encouraged by some of the stuff that he's put out this week regarding the pay-per-view. And I don't know if you saw there was a fans committee that has kind of uh, has now taken some legal action against the Premier League to to reveal the reasons why uh, they blocked the takeover bid. Um, it's, it's quite interesting to see they they've gone to the, the sports uh, court of arbitration, I think. Um, so that that would be interesting, but necessarily a better solution out there because we're not going to invest in the players to to introduce a new system of play. The players we've got are committed enough that we'll get enough points to survive, and it's just going to be a rinse and repeat of every season that we've seen for the last couple of years until we can actually sell the club and we can kind of move on to a different era. So I think Bruce is, should stay and probably will stay and will probably finish 16th, 15th, maybe 14th because we've got better players now than we did last season. And that's, that's just going to be the tale of our season, I think. Would you, would you be happy with that right now? If I said now, right, do you know what? You're going to finish season 16th. Would you no, be happy with that? No. You should uh, be. Hey, hey, I... I bought a bit of a tangent, but I bought the, the new FIFA game last night. Well, not last night, sorry, a couple of nights ago. And there's an option to like immediately start with 500 million in your transfer budget. And just the, the thought of being able to buy a Kylian Mbappe. Even, yeah, exactly. Try and buy Messi. <laughs> um, Barcelona won't have it. But uh, it's just impossible, I think, for us to really like progress as a football club without that kind of injection of of cash and also just a new strategic like vision for the club. So at the moment we're stuck with Bruce. We're going to play Brucey ball for the rest of the season. I think at least um, no idea. Don't ask me what the lineup's going to be from week to week. And I suit one, in which case it'll be exactly the same as the week before. And you know, I'm just going to have to grit and grin and bear it. Cause it's just the football is so bad to watch. And it brings other teams down around us. Uh, elaborate on that. I mean, because like, you deserve to beat Burnley, right? And I know that it was quite widespread that Burnley were a lot better in the second half against you in, I think it was game week four, wasn't it? I'm not sure they were. I, I felt you played, for the majority of the game, you were the better side. It wasn't a brilliant watch. Would you agree with that? No. Well, what was the, the last year? What's the, yeah, I would agree. I, I haven't seen a brilliant watch for Newcastle since where both teams have, have played well. I can't remember the last game that both teams have really been on their A game, competed well, and like Newcastle have come out with a positive result. Like genuinely off the top of my head, I can't remember that. It's, it's usually we catch a team on a bad day or there's something in the kind of the set up of the system that exposes some weaknesses of the other team. I don't think I know Sean was talking about Everton's need to press like the way that we play and how defensively deep we set. I don't think unless you're going to try and nick the ball off us outside the digital area, I don't think pressing is going to be a massive issue. I think it's going to be get the ball to Hammers Rodriguez. Like you say, I'd be amazed if from an FPL point of view, we don't see a Rodriguez assist, Calvert-Lewin goal this weekend. So if you own both, I think you're laughing. With that in mind, Sean, if uh, there was an FPL manager sitting out there with no Salah, no Mane, no Kane, no Son, and said to you, I want to stick the armband on Calvert-Lewin this weekend, what would your thoughts be? I'd, I'd say that's, that's too big a risk, to be honest. I mean, I do, I do feel like there's every chance Don will get get a goal. I'm not sure it'll be any more than that. I don't, I don't see with all with and I don't, I don't see us, I don't see us scoring sort of three, four goals. Um, no chance. I'd, I'd agree with that generally. He's not going to play ten man West Brom every week. Where obviously the goals come late in the second half. Look, his, his goal scoring so far this season is brilliant, right? But remove that second half. Callum Wilson has got more FPL points than him. Remarkably, he's only three FPL points between Calvert-Lewin and, and Callum Wilson. Seems mad. 
what's um what's your thoughts on Hammers, Sean? I, I know you you love him, but just elaborate in terms of what he's he's bringing to the team at the moment. Well, I think what it what it what it brings is is what you know everything that we were missing last season, um, because we we were utterly hopeless from open play in the centre of the park. So bringing in bringing in Rodriguez has just opened up the whole pitch for us. It's getting the best out of a Charleston because we've got somebody who can now switch the play and get the ball out to him early. So, you know, full-backs have got to be aware of Richarlison's runs. But Richarlison also comes in centrally to support Dom. So you've got Lucas Dean overlapping. And Rodriguez can pick him out, set pieces. You know, his delivery is... Luke, Luca Dean was brilliant. Gilfy Sigerton's good at set pieces, but Rodriguez's delivery is just next level again. So we were already good. From, from corners and, and free kicks and he's just took it he's just took it up a level and the lad he, you know he's just a different class to watch his, his touches is, is fantastic the way he finds space for himself and then he sort of stays on the right for the first 20 minutes 25 minutes and then has license to drift centrally and you'll even see him coming over to the left sometimes during the game so he's got very much a, a free role because he knows he's got the likes of Allen and do Kuda helping to cover the fullback areas behind him? Yeah, he's really important, actually. It's a good point. And so, Decore would normally be the, the right of the midfield three. So, obviously, he's got the legs to get out there. Um, and I'd obviously, look, in terms of the Dean Richarlison tandem, when they're obviously both available, that's obviously a prominent point of your attack. And uh, right back will invariably put brakes on a bit more. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. Are you happy with the position that Hammers plays, just generally? I know you're saying he's getting license to float, but is, is there any bit of you thinks, well, I wish he just played central? No, it, it's, very, it's very much where I expected him to play, to be honest, after, after you know, talking to, to a few sort of journalists on Twitter that know him from, from his time in Spain um, and, and how to get the best out of him. Um, and we sort of had in mind that Carlo Ancelotti would, would probably be going towards a 4-3-3. Um, so I, I think it's quite clever the way the way he's got him there because, like I say, it, it gives him gives him a, a lot of a lot of freedom, um, and teams don't quite seem to know what they should do to mark him because of the fact, like I say, he spends the first 20, 25 minutes out wide, and then he starts drifting in, and I think that's partly why we scored so many goals so early because you've seen teams sort of struggle with with who's going to pick him up. And such is his quality. If he gets a little bit of space outside the area, I mean, that left foot is a one. Yeah, the only thing I felt on Sunday, Sean, was Bertrand and Redmond are a good little combination on the left-hand side for Southampton. And it just felt he got forced so deep at times. Um, and he does work hard and he does go back. That That's not in question. It reminded me a bit, though, I, I had similar with Rafa van der Vaart when we had him 10 years ago. And Rodriguez is... He's a much fitter player than Rafa was. But he ended up playing deep right midfield quite a lot. And you want him as close to goal as possible, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Newcastle's not the sort of team that's probably going to force that on Hammers. But should St. Maximin start off the left, it might be that whether it's by design or not, he's forced to go quite deep, deep during the game. Which, yeah. with the issues on the left, you could do without this week, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I, the, the other thing about Rodriguez is if you play him as a ten, then then he sort of he's one of the three centrally. And I don't, I don't think, I think that the, like you say, he he, he he tries to get back, he he puts the yards in, but he's not an effective tackler. So by having him as part, having three lads behind him who can do that work, I think that's why you see him so effective in the game. Whereas if he only had two, if he was part of the central three, I, I think he'd struggle a bit more or the team would struggle a bit more if that was our setup. So that's why I like him wide, you know, wide right of the, of the front three. I think you had a point you were going to say, so. Or maybe not, he's frozen on us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess one of the... One, it's one of the uh, one of the reasons why I hope Hayden's fit, and if we play five at the back, uh, I would almost give him a free roll just to go man mark Rodriguez, particularly with Richarlison out. Because if you're if you guys aren't going to necessarily play that pressing game, you know, and 
from what I've seen of Everton this season, it's, it's difficult with Charleston out. Um, if you can stop that supply line into him or just get in and around him, and it looks like a lot, a lot of teams like have progressively kicked him more as every game's gone on. So I think the fouls against him have gone up. Um, and I can, I can only really see that trend continue. And he seems to be the sort of player that at the start of the season, no one's really accounted for. Obviously, everyone knows this is like a well-renowned talent, but maybe as the season progresses, teams might gain for him a bit more. And I think, hopefully, if I can give Bruce a bit of credit, he might be able to pull that off if we've got someone like Hayden that can get around the pitch where he is. Because I think with... Uh, with Charleston missing, it does cut off, you know, one very sort of lethal avenue for you. And it, that seems like the obvious plan A would be to get Rodriguez on the ball and trying to get Calvert-Lewin in that way. So if we can stop him through a um, bit of a man-marking job and with five, five at the back, I think that's possible. Um, that might be a, a way to, to limit what Evan can do, I think, this weekend. Thoughts on that, Sean? Would that be a concern for you if, if someone dropped on Hamish during the game? Well, I mean, it, it, you never like the, the sound of, you know, someone getting man-marked sort of fills you with dread, doesn't it? Because you, you worry that your most creative player is not going to get any, any time on the ball. But when, when, when I watched him this season, you know, particularly against Tottenham, it was so impressive the way you know, Ben Davis couldn't get near him. He, he, he just... He just He's a world-class player. He knows how to find space. And I think, um, whilst it sounds, you know, it sounds entirely logical what I say, um, but don't underestimate the kid on the left that's going to come in. He, he is an absolute flying machine. And, and I think Rodriguez, if he comes deep, will be looking for that switch of play over to the left-hand side. And if Andy Gordon does play, which I, I kind of think he will, Gordon will look to support Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I think they'll have to be careful of the Kunku coming coming down that left wing because the lad the lad's got quality. You know, we did see it in the League Cup. Um, one of the assists that he got was was that fleet was that outstanding, outstanding. So he has he has got quality, and that might be something that we, we can sort of catch Newcastle out because they focus that much on Rodriguez that the youngster That's on that, the man. left can play a big part in the in, in the game. Where do you think you'll finish now, Sean? My my sort of um, view on the season, you know, hasn't really changed to be honest. I mean, I, I still think it'll be it'll be somewhere between sort of six and eight. Um, I think if we can get between sixty and seventy points, obviously, I'd like us to get closer to seventy. But I think that's progression for us because you know we did finish twelfth last season, and we struggled in the last few years to show progression. All the managers that have come in have done very, very well in their first season. And then all momentum has been lost for various reasons, you know, with, with key players leaving or, you know, not signing the targets that we wanted to. So I, I like the fact that Carlo was able to come in and get a few months to assess the squad. And I think that was crucial to then making the right signings to allow us to compete more this season. And we've already seen it. And I, and I think it will carry on. That we will give the so-called established top six in the league a much, much tougher game than we previously have. And I think we'll find a bit more consistency against the teams in the bottom half of the table, which should see us, like I say, finish somewhere between, I'd like to think, mid-60s to, to 70 sort of point mark, which should get us European football or certainly have us in the, uh, you know, in the, in the equation for it. The high 60s, Sean, could be top four this year. With the way it started so far, that all the clubs, uh, you know, Tottenham, Arsenal, United, Chelsea, they've all had inconsistencies for like eighteen months now. Um, so, let, if if you or someone else, uh, a Leicester, for example, can show consistency, it's on the table for you. You just got to go and take it. I think the one thing I would say is I got concerns about you this weekend because I just feel like there's one too many players missing. Yeah. If you can keep the, the, the structure of the main 11, if that means Delph is going to come into the team, so be it. But the core of the important players, get Holgate back fit, for example, as well. Then I think you've got a shot at top four. But I think that has to happen. Is is You have to run the luck with injuries and suspensions yeah. this year. Yeah. And it just suddenly felt like Richarlison suspended, Dean suspended, 
Hamley's carrying an injury at the time of recording. We don't we don't actually know yeah, if yeah. he's going to be no. fit or not for no. the weekend as well. Um, so that's a, that's a big deal. You're going to have to keep players players fit. Yeah. Let's let's do predictions before we finish then, guys. Si, I know you kind of alluded to it already, but give us a correct score prediction for the weekend. Uh, I'm going to put my positive hat on and say it will be an exact replica of, of the Wolves game where we go 1-0 down, get battered, and then do like we did last season where Bajin scored two injury time goals to, to nick a point. I know that was at Goodison, but... I, I could see that potentially happening again. Uh, a Pickford mistake in the last minute. Get us a point. The worrying bit is so good, Sean. I'll take that. So you think a draw then? Maybe, yeah. I'd say if Richardson was playing, we'd have no chance. Um, but too, too much quality, too much movement. Um, but with, with him not out there, I think we might be able to just game plan enough to to get a positive result out of it. And I, I, don't, I still don't trust Everton defensively. So, yeah, let's, let's say a, a draw. I'll take that. Sean? I think we could sneak a 2-1 win. Why sneak? But I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a, a sort of swaggeringly good performance. I think, I think we'll have to grind, grind up the victory. But I think, I think we can just about do it. Yeah, Mike, if I was a better man, I'd say 2-1. Yeah. So it was last year. That was the score last year, wasn't it? Calvin Lewin scored twice, didn't he, Sean? Um, I think he got both, went, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'm, just con- I'm, just, I'm just concerned, Sean, about what I said in terms of Dean Richarlison. If that's Hammers missing as well, that, that can be quite big. I think I'll, I'll possibly go for a draw here, 1-1. And actually, if Hammers is missing, I'd be a bit concerned for you, Sean. Oh um, yeah, so, so so would I. It'd, be yeah. two on the, it'd probably be well. Yeah, I'd say it'd be two one the other way if Rodriguez doesn't play. If, yeah, to be honest, if if Hammers isn't fit, I'd be concerned actually that he right. might get beat. Oddly enough, which yeah. considering everything we've just discussed over the last forty minutes or so is a little bit bizarre. How do you feel now, Sire? Uh, si? I'm going going down the bookies. I think. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if... Listen, we ain't. We don't feel that strong about it, mate. No, I, I, I gen- genuinely like. Could happen. I'd be pretty happy with it, but I, I just I'm pretty blasé about us now. Like if we lose, it's like fine. We'll pick up points. It might not happen this weekend. It might happen next weekend. We'll, we'll get to forty odd points and how it happens. You no, know, it's pretty hard to, to stay motivated and, and locked into individual games when you're a Newcastle fan these days. No, I get you. I think and, and you know, even if we get relegated. I was going to say, if we get relegated, it means we'll be able to get taken over. Yeah, well, yeah, no, because it means we can get... They, they let anyone take over clubs in the Football League, so it means we'll be able to get <laughs> that, take over that, 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 no might not, that might not be the anyway, case if by we the finish time last, you end up there. We, if we got relegated... Well, yeah, that would be just our luck. But if we, if we got relegated and came last, uh, you know, previous years it's happened. I've, like, not spoke to people for three days, cried tears... Honestly, I wouldn't even be that bothered this year. It's just what we needed. And like equally, if you finish 10th, I wouldn't care either. It's just kind of where we're at right now. It's just just kind of going through the motions. There is a, a passiveness about Newcastle fans, generally on the whole. It's not just you, Si, who came into this season with, with that idea. I was sort of hoping performance like at West Ham might have given you a bit of a, a lift, etc. But I, I get it. I get it completely. You can't see... The, the green, if you will, the bright lights of what the football club's going to be next year, the year after, whatever. It feels like a repetitive cycle. I feel for you. I get it. I went through this with Tottenham in the 90s and Sean's team's gone through it as well of being absolutely nothing and just not seeing where it's going. In fact, we went through it when you were bloody good, Si, in the, in the mid to late 90s, right? So, yeah. you'll come back, no doubt about it. Thanks very much, guys. Um, next week's Clash of the Correspondence will be Leicester v Wolves with uh, Aaron Lagle and Bradley Parker. Uh, tomorrow I'll be streaming Ash James very early again, probably 9am on YouTube, and my deadline stream will be at 5.30. Um, but other than that, thanks very much to Si and Sean. Best of luck this weekend, gents. Cue music, please, man, Charlie.